guys, welcome to a sit down video which feels quite strange because I feel like I hardly ever do these anymore and I feel like I haven't quite got my set up in this new house yet but I'm just going to film up here for now because yeah I just wanted to sit down with you and talk to you about my top 10 books of 2020 or 2020. Now this video won't be for everyone so feel free to click off if you're not that interested in books but I am a big book lover and I know a few of you out there will enjoy this video so yeah stay tuned if you want to find some books for next year. Now I set myself a reading task of I think 18 books this year and I use Goodreads which I'll link my user below if you are on there. I always find it really really impossible to like find people on Goodreads but yeah I'll link my profile and I ended up hitting 31. Can you see that? So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that and I actually thank COVID for that because less time commuting, more time reading, that's for sure. I definitely smashed out the reading probably like the first three quarters of this year and then it kind of started to slow down a little bit when we were moving and all the house stress and everything. But definitely books for me this year have been a big escape for me, which sounds quite cheesy, but it's very, very true. And yeah, I just fell in love with reading even more this year than last year and I think yeah I managed 18 books last year or might have been 20 and I'm so chuffed that I've reached over 30. One of those is a short story but anyway. And if you don't already follow me on Instagram I do like to do little mini book reviews on my stories so you can go onto my page and I've got highlights there which has got all mini reviews from this year so yeah go check that out if you're interested. Cool so I was writing down um, a bit of a list in my notebook and it actually ended up being 10 books this year that were the standout ones for me. They're quite a bit of a range here, but I thought that was quite nice. And I thought, let's go with 10 because that's a nice number. There's a lot more that I really, really enjoyed this year. But as I said, these are the ones that definitely stick out in my mind. So I've done it in the order that I read them as well this year. So the first one on the list, which was the first book I read 2020 and probably up there like top three that I loved this year, which was The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. And if you don't know, he is the author of The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, which I haven't actually read, so maybe I'll have to give that a go. To be honest, like long books put me off a little bit. This is a chunky read. I think it's got over four, oh no, 400? What am I talking about? 726 pages in this beast. I absolutely loved it. So it follows a guy called Cyril. He's born out of wedlock by a teenage girl who lives in like the countryside in Ireland and he gets adopted by this like really eccentric couple in Dublin. He doesn't really have like the best life to be quite honest and the book spans from the 1940s to like today so it spans across many many years and it just covers so many different aspects of like love and loss and heartache and he's gay in quite a conservative island and yeah it's like really hard hitting in places but what I really liked about it it has some nice little soft comical moments in it as well and it's just not really like anything else I've read before something else really this year I really try to like come out of my box with my reading and read things that weren't just chick flicks so I absolutely loved this and it's one of those books that I really wanted to like pass on to lots of people. I passed it on to my mum and yeah, I will just treasure this book. It's just one of those really lovely books. So yeah, love it. Let me know if you read it. The next book is actually on my Kindle and it is If I Never Met You by, I think her name is Mahari McFarlane, McFarlane, McFarlane. Yeah, apologies if I... Um, pronounce that wrong. This is quite a different book. This is one of the chick flicks that I read for 2020 and I put it in here because I think it's really good to have a mix of like fun reads and like more serious reads and um, yeah it's essentially her partner of like a decade so like 10 years splits up with her and she just feels quite lost. She works in a law firm with this ex-boyfriend and ends up deciding to have a fake relationship with somebody else that they work with in the law firm who's not notable as this like playboy and they kind of get together as a fake relationship to 
for like different reasons he's trying to get promotion and look a bit better for a guy anyway it's it's fun um it's one that sticks out for me one that i'd recommend as like a good holiday read not that we're going on holiday anytime soon but if you really want a bit of an escape and yeah just a little girly book so would highly recommend that if you're looking for a quick short chick flick pretty sure i read that in like two days and i have read others other of her books as well and i really enjoyed them too so if you're looking for a girly book go for it right the third book i don't actually have with me in physical form because when i like a book i tend to like pass them on to friends and family because i really like sharing the love um so my friend has this book but i'll pop a little photo of it here um this is educated by tara westover i have my notes here and this is definitely again one of my like top three books of this year totally unexpected as well i think i bought the book for like 50p in a charity shop and i absolutely loved it it's based on a true story of a girl tara who lives in like the mountains in idaho in america and her family are like survivalists so they're prepping for the end of the world and they don't believe in like doctors or education or nurses and so much happens in this book and so much of it is like unbelievable that I didn't actually quite realise it. I think I did know it was a real true story but I was just so fascinated that this was a real story. I got quite obsessed with it after I'd read it, I was watching interviews with Tara and it's just like totally unbelievable. It's called Educated because she ends up like, educating herself because she wants to learn and she ends up going to Harvard and Cambridge, I think it is. And yeah, it's just like crazy. It's about like family and loss and some really heartbreaking things happen, some really like crazy things happen in it. And you just honestly read it like, how is this a true story? So I would definitely recommend it if you've thought about reading it. And yeah, true story is always a good one. So highly recommend that. The next one I also don't have in physical form, so I'll pop another photo. Um, but this is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This was actually kind of gifted to me by Penguin before it came out in the summer. And it essentially does what it says on the tin. It is a really good beach read. So one that you would take to the beach with you to, on holiday or to the park or in the garden. Um, but obviously these days, mainly on the sofa. It's another like girly book just to break up like from the more serious reads. And it, again, it's just one that stood out for me. I've recommended it to a few friends if they wanted to like just have a bit of escapism and have a little bit of fun. It's basically about two writers. Um, one lady called January and a guy called Gus. She is known for her romantic novels, whereas he's very much like an author of serious, more like horrible novels. And either of them do not respect the other. They end up like living next door to each other in the summer. Both have a writer's block and an inspiration. So decides to write a novel of the either genre. So he has to write a romantic one. She has to write a more serious one. But, um, you know, they help each other get through it, they have lots of tiffs, and there's a lot of tension, if you know what I mean. But yeah, if you're after something a bit fun, then definitely recommend that. Normally it's like on a good Kindle deal, so um, look out for that. Just on that, I always sign up for the Kindle 99p deal, so there's like a notification that you can do on your Amazon account, and I have an email that comes to me every morning, or like in the afternoon and it tells you what is the 99p P deals of the day so definitely recommend that if you've got a kindle and you're looking for a good deal the next one is another kindle read and i was feeling a little bit bereft that i had finished normal people on bbc and i am a bit of a sally rooney fangirl these days i loved both of her like full length books last year and I was doing some reading and I realised she's got quite a few short stories and one has been published by Faber and it is Mr Salary. I had actually realised after I'd bought this on Kindle that the whole of the short story is on the Irish Times so I'll leave a link for that below but I think it is also 99p on Kindle as well. But yeah essentially it's another love story, this was written before Normal People and Conversations with Friends. I think it's about 70 pages or something like that so I got through it very very quickly but I absolutely loved it. I don't fully remember it in that much detail but it's about a girl called Suki and she goes to live in Boston, has to then come back to Ireland because her father is sick and her like long term friend comes pick her up called Nathan and it kind of transpires that they used to live together, he's 15 years older than her, essentially it's a love story and 
yeah I remember really really loving it and if you're a fan of Sally Rooney then definitely check it out or even if you're not it's probably a good taster into her writing as well because it's like so short and yeah a good snackable piece of loveliness yeah next up is Queenie so this is by Candice Carty Williams now this was very much raved about um this year especially around black lives matter movement and yeah it just like rose in popularity very very quickly um and i got it quite soon i guess before like it really kicked off and i read it super super fast i absolutely loved it lent it to my mum who also really enjoyed it and yeah i found it really really funny in parts if you don't know um queenie is 25 year old jamaican british woman living in london she works at a national newspaper and is constantly feeling pressured by like white society around her and um, she's recently broken up with her boyfriend and yeah it's just all around like the trials and tribulations of a 25 year old black woman um in london and um i absolutely loved it it's really funny in parts it's quite sad in parts and yeah there's just like not much more to say about this really but if you haven't given it a go then do it's quite a quick read um because you can see here some of it is like done in like text and things like that not much more to say about that really but really enjoyed it the next book i read in 2020 again is up there with one of my favorites this is a bit of a beast this was over like 500 kindle pages potentially one of the longest kindle books i've ever read but it's americana by shim amanda ngozi adishi and yeah as i said absolutely loved this it's the story of a couple that both live in nigeria and she travels from nigeria to america to, to kind of like try out the american life eventually does come back to nigeria but it spans across like 15 years and covers like love and family and there's just so much more to it it's like an exploration of race in america the differences of like western and eastern worlds because she obviously travels from Amer africa to america and vice versa and yeah it's just it goes quite deep but i think it's really really important read um she's also a writer so she writes like blog posts which there were so many insightful things within the blog posts themselves that i really really enjoyed and yeah i think it's well worth the read if you can get through it and um yeah luckily i was in a good headspace to get through that because near the end of this year i think i would have struggled Okay, I'm trying not to repeat myself by saying this is definitely up there, <laughs> so I won't keep saying it, but the next book is Daisy Jones and the Six, and I had already read The Seven Husbands of, can't even remember, Evelyn something, by Taylor Jenkins Reid, but this was so much better in my opinion. I actually don't love the cover, there's a nicer cover than this, but yeah, I'd read Seven Husbands of Evelyn, and I was just thinking, I don't get the hype around this or her, like, at all. But I just didn't enjoy that story very much. Whereas this is like a whole nother level for me. It's based in the 1970s in America. It's like a true life story, but it's actually not. And it follows a rock band that is fronted by Billy Dunn or Dune. And Daisy joins the band. And yeah, it's so well done. You can see that how it's written, it's kind of written as if they're talking. And the way it's done is almost like a documentary style. They're like all talking and you, it's really, really interesting because you get to know their characters really well. All the different like characters within the, brat, the band and how they'll like say the same story but in a different way. And yeah, like real life really when people remember things quite differently. And I absolutely love this. I smashed through it really, really quickly. And it just like goes through like sex, drugs, rock and roll and like all the bits in between and how they kind of rise to fame there's a lot of sexual tension in there again and also yeah like how they come to them break up and like the story behind it and yeah i love this and they're bringing out a tv adaption of this as well um i'm not 100 percent sure about the cast to be honest but i'm sure i'm gonna love it and yeah i definitely recommend this again like a nice quick read i'd say and a bit of fun now, because I love that one so much, I then found this one of Taylor Jenkins Reid on a Kindle deal, which is called One True Loves. And I really, really enjoyed this one as well. It's about a girl called Emma, and she has like a childhood sweetheart called Jessie. They marry in their early 20s and have a really lovely life 
early life together go travelling and they end up moving to LA and then he goes on a helicopter ride for work and ends up getting lost in the Pacific and yeah it goes missing so she then finds like herself absolutely heartbroken um, and then a good like years and years later ends up bumping into an old school friend called Sam and it turns out that he's also in love with her and they form a really lovely relationship Jesse then comes back, which isn't kind of spoiling it because it does say that in the blurb, and then she's ended up juggling a husband and a fiancé, and um, it's all around like which one will she choose, and I loved it, but it also is quite heartbreaking at times, like it really pulls on your heartstrings, maybe I'm just a bit of a softie, but having been with Dan for a long long time and being together since we were young, it kind of like pulled at those heartstrings a little bit with that like whole concept of, you know, do you just have one love in life or do you have more than one love and yeah I really really enjoyed it and um, it's a good little read again as well if you are into that kind of thing. Okay and my final book which again sadly I don't have because my mum has it because I like to pass them around is Where the Crawdads Sing and this is another really hyped up book for this year and it really didn't disappoint for me um, I know some people do think it's overrated but I don't know if I went into it thinking I probably wouldn't like it because I'd heard some things about it being quite slow I blooming loved it <laughs> um, I'd say that this one potentially is like my top one if not top two with um, Hearts Invisible Furies and it's about Kia who is known as the Marsh Girl in a really small fishing town in America and she is brought up like all around nature doesn't have the best life um, her like mum leaves and her dad is not a particularly nice dad and she doesn't go to school so quite similar actually to Educated in a way where she ends up kind of like teaching herself but kind of just teaches herself about nature and um, I loved the connection that she had to like the sea and the water and yeah and there's love stories within it and essentially some guy called Chase in the village gets murdered or he's found killed and that becomes part of the story as well because they believe that maybe she did it and there's another love story in it with a guy called Tate and yeah the whole thing is lovely I really really enjoyed it it's got a few twists and turns to it and it kind of goes from the past to the present so it kind of keeps you guessing quite a bit so yeah highly recommend it if you haven't yet read it and you thought maybe it's a bit overhyped I personally loved it um, and I know a few other people that did as well but yeah that is me finished I really really enjoyed sitting down and like planning this video looking back at my top books for this year and it's kind of made me feel like excited to get reading again um, as I said I really got out of it like at, at the end of this year and I really hope that I can read again a lot next year although I don't think it'll be maybe quite as many as this year as I said I'll leave my good reads below and I will continue to like do mini book reviews on my Instagram as well and yeah thank you so much if you enjoy watching my book content and um, I hope you enjoy watching this let me know in the comment box below which one of those you've read as well or if you'd recommend any others of what I like but yeah thank you for watching don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you are new and I will see you again soon bye